I should be online. Let me just verify. Yeah, I'm online. Great. Perfect. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Perfect time. <laughs> Hi, so today a TIA live stream. I have not live streamed a TIA in, I don't know, in a long time, probably a month or two even. Uh, but I saw that a lot of people like my simulation and are asking for, hey, give me the password and stuff, but nah. <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna take it, uh, take it like apart together, piece by piece. Um, the thing is, I have not been programming on the simulation for I don't know, for a year maybe. Hi, hi everyone. I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. How's everyone? <laughs> um, yeah, I have not been working on that simulation for a long time. So I personally don't know anymore what's inside. <laughs> so, so please forgive me if I don't know every single detail about it. Um, so you, you you will now see how a project looks like that I do. <laughs> so let's, let's have a look inside, I would say. Um, for this, if you want to, uh, if you want to do the same in the background or on another screen or so, feel free. I'm going really step by step through everything, explaining as much as I can. If you've got questions, always just put them in the chat there. Hi everyone, I see you. Hi, hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, just put your questions down there. Um, I will try to answer as much as I can. I don't know how long the stream is going to be. I don't know if we will get to understand everything but at least big parts, I would say. So for this, if you want to participate, uh, of course, you have to get the simulation first. Uh, I only have it in TR version 15.1, but in my previous video, I've got my previous video and there we've got the link down in the description. Boop. I'll just download that. You can just download it, right? It's, it's a free thing. Boop. There you go, got it downloaded. I have it already here on my desktop. There you go. Uh, first thing to run the simulation, retrieve. I have an empty project. I don't have a project open, so it's just to your portal. Project open and retrieve. Hey, Gabor, and hello everyone else. Uh, I'll open the simulation, thanks simulation. It needs to retrieve the project. Um, retrieved. Project. You can select any folder, doesn't matter. It's now retrieving the project. Then I want to run it. Uh, in the previous video, I showed how it how it works, like how you can use the simulation. Now we're really taking it apart, so piece by piece. I already looked earlier today. I already looked into the program, and I was like, I don't understand what I did. <laughs> but we'll we'll get there. Like it's not impossible. It's it's actually not too complicated. Um, and in the comments of the last video, there were also questions. Did you use the simulation block for this? I did not use the simulation block. Um, there is a simulation block that does pretty much what the simulation does, like uh, if it comes to system behavior, but I didn't use it because I kind of couldn't. <laughs> it didn't work for me. So I was like, nah, I don't, I don't care about it. So I made my own, which is of course way better. <laughs> All Siemens based products up to that. That's great. I hope I help you a little bit. Great. Uh, I'll run the simulation and then while we watch the simulation, we can go through the blocks and see what the blocks actually do. Because I don't know anymore. <laughs> so downloading the simulation now. And I'm listening to music. If, if you hear me like humming around or singing, it's because I'm listening to music on the side. And it's copyrighted. That's why I cannot put it in the video. Like if I if I do this, it's just music. Ah, good. I've got the simulation running. You can see green uh, run LED. I'll put that to the side. And now we also start the runtime of the system view here. Boop. Close your eyes. And the run starting the runtime usually takes some time. Maybe a minute. Even on my PC, which is quite strong, it takes probably like 30 seconds or so. Maybe even a minute. Might be. And once it's running, there it is. Okay, it takes maybe 20 seconds. <laughs> there it is. Um, good. We can take all of this apart. 
in the program. Does it work? Yeah, it still works good. Um, I haven't really prepared what exactly is going on, so it's all very spontaneous. If anyone wants to see something, just put a comment and I will show you. Uh, but yeah, let's just let's just dive into it. The tank at factory IO. I have not used factory IO for this. Overshoots and slowness. Well, what? Factory IO uses voltages as input and output side. I don't know. I, I would have to check Factory IO how it exactly works there. Uh, but voltages is a good hint, is a good thing. Because my simulation here does not use any voltages or so, right? There's no real input module. So you can see everything, every single thing is simulated. <laughs> I learned everything from you. <laughs> That's nice. I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah. Um, how do we start? Probably we should actually start with the main block. So in the main block, I do all the calls of all the functions. That's what you do. I've got three of those orange blocks here, uh, purple. And those are all organization blocks. OB1, of course, the main OB1 gets executed every PLC cycle which is quite different. Sometimes it's one millisecond, sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 500 nanos, uh, microseconds. Uh, it's not very fixed on how many times a second is it is executed. Um, that's actually bad, but for most things it's not too important. But for some it is important. That's why I have these other two. And those other two functions here, they are getting executed in a very specific time frame. The PID, I don't know, right click properties. This one here gets executed every 500 microseconds. And this one here, I call it one millisecond. So this one probably gets executed every millisecond. Yes. <clears throat> huh, I would need to think about it be some. Yeah, so. Uh, this one here is very uncontrolled. You can right click, but you cannot set how fast it should be. It's just running. Whenever the PLC does nothing, it does the main. Um, we can just check what's in the main, I would say, because that's the easiest. Yeah, um, <laughs> a lot of people have asked for the password and because I, I didn't want to give out the password because my programming is not the best and no one would understand what's going on. But since I am anyway showing you how this works, the password, the password for opening those blocks is very creative. <laughs> it is Higamol123. <laughs> it's my name plus 123. I put it in the chat. That's the password for accessing those all of these blocks. Um, and I didn't, I didn't make it public before. Uh, I didn't make it public before because, well, it's dirty programming, some of it. My music is way too loud. Yeah, so there you've got the password. With this, you can open all the blocks. All the blocks, they have all the same password. Hey, Gamora, 123. It's always the same password. You can use it for all the blocks. But let's look into the main function first. I even have put some... Um, some comments on there to explain what's going on there. Uh, let's see, I have no idea what I did here. Some things are pretty simple, pretty easy. So I will explain these first. Uh, yeah, let's go online. Let's go online, let's look into the program. Pretty easy. Uh, we're not looking at the first and second function here, uh, uh, network. We're looking at the rest. So we've got network three, which is manual control, network four, which is on off control, network five, which is off con uh, on off controller with hysteresis. Whoops. Ugh, I cannot write. But that's spelled correct. I don't care. <laughs> um, yeah, you have these 
different um you have these different types of control that you can select with this drop down here right you've got manual on off on off with hysteresis and depending on what you select here on this uh drop down you are just changing the so-called that's what i programmed uh, the variable HMI data uh, controller type. Controller type one, one means it's manual control. Controller type two, I'm deactivating the manual control and activating the on-off control. Pretty simple actually, with just this simple block here, the simple, uh, what is it called? Uh, it's got a name, uh, comparator. With this simple comparator, if the controller type is equal to three, we are using hysteresis. Right. If it is equal to two, we are using on off control and so on. Pretty simple, actually. And that's what we're doing with the uh, hysteresis here, with the, with the drop down. Then we have the PID. And because the PID needs to be run very fast in a specific time frame, I've put it in another interrupt. Right. In this interrupt here, in the 500 microseconds. And you see, if the controller type is four, then we're using PID. So that's this controller type. Not too complex, actually. It just decides which type of control do we have. If it's three, well, PID is deactivated. Right? What happens inside the functions is, of course, next thing. Not the next thing, but definitely a thing. <clears throat> no, the flow over time, you will see the flow over time is actually a little bit more complex. There's a lot of mathematics involved. We'll get there in the, in, in the stream. Yeah. Um, so that one, okay, that one, okay, that one, okay. A short explanation on these. Then we've got here network six in main is pretty simple. Empty tank and integro sum. Um, go here if I do whatever, whatever. Uh, wait, oh, here we go. Uh, it's in the chat. Hegar mole one, two, three. I think I still have it there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, this, this block here actually pretty simple. If I press this empty tank button, you see those two get activated. And one of them is moving a zero into the fill level, into the current fill level, very simple. And the other one is putting a zero into the integral sum. The integral sum is a is internal from the PID controller, but we need to reset it at some point. So whenever I empty the tank, I said, hey, let's empty the integral sum. <laughs> Watching you, it's... The... <laughs> well, exams are not too important most of the times. I always hate making exams. I'm a teacher, so I have to make exams. I don't like exams. Well, they are necessary sometimes. Well, they are necessary all the time, but I, I still don't like them. Um, so this button basically just pushes a zero in these two variables. If I want to reset something else, I could just make a parallel branch and move something somewhere else. Very simple, a zero into another thing. <clears throat> Pretty simple. Or if I always want to reset to a level of five, I've just put a five in here. If I reset now, there's gonna be a five in there. <laughs> I'm definitely not the best, I'm good, but definitely not the best. Um, yeah, so now if there's a five, I empty the tank, it will always go to five. But that's not what you do by emptying a tank, it's zero. So that's definitely more the easy parts. <laughs> that's definitely easy parts. There's also difficult parts. I will get to them in a second. First, let's have a look at the different controllers. At the different controllers, um, I would say we just dive into the manual control. Right. Hey everyone, hi everyone. <clears throat> Uh, I recommend whatever feels better for you. Function block diagram or uh, ladder logic doesn't make much of a difference. You can ever, you can always right click, switch the programming language, function block diagram, there we go. Now it's function block diagram. Um, I personally prefer ladder logic because it is easier to understand if you are from an electrical engineering background because it looks like a wiring diagram. So let's dive into the manual control. You see this manual control actually is 
spelled correctly. I, was, I, I thought it was incorrect for a second. Yeah. No, no, it's on my channel. You can. It always takes, like the live streams usually take one, one day or so to compile on YouTube. But it will be available, sure. Um, yeah. It is Tia Thursday. Every Thursday there's a Tia video. So that's the Tia video for today. No, you cannot change between ladder logic and STL. Hey, hey, was hi. Um, STL is. I would not recommend getting too deep into STL anymore because it has changed. It used to be very important. It is not. It's not that important anymore. STL is not that important anymore. Um, S7 300 always. STL is always the best. 1500. It's not really necessary. See, I cannot even select it here anymore. There's details. I'm not going into details now, but there's details. I would not recommend learning it too much. You should know it, but not too much. Good. Manual control. I can go in here. The input for the manual control is, um, well, look at this. Manual control in percent. That's just the slider. Let, let, me, uh, let me select the type. Manual control. And there you see the slider is currently at 10. So it's basically just the slider here. Uh, that's the input to the function. Not too difficult, I would say, right? Not too difficult, I would say. If this is at zero, the output of that thing is also zero. Sure. If this is at 100, the output of this function is at 32,767, which is 100% for a digital output. Right? That is all for an integer, actually. Not exactly. Well, yeah. Uh, which is 100%, right? That's the output side. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's just those two videos because there's, I uploaded videos about this a year ago or so, and there was a lot of people that want to look into it. <laughs> and I'm just giving out the knowledge. Um, yeah, and everything in between, it's just linear assignment. So make a guess what's inside. It's basically a multiplication. So if we go in here and type in the password that I have given in the chat, it's basically just this linear uh, multiplication, which is also used as scaling. It is a scaling that I do in here. Um, we're taking the slider value in, right? We're taking the slider value in and we are scaling it between zero. If we have a zero, we have zero at the output. And if we have a 100, we have 1.0 at the output. Everything in between is just linear. So we're always between a value between zero and one. That's how scaling works, or that's, that's how normalizing works. So we have always are between zero and one. And then we just need to scale it. If there comes a zero out of this block, right? If the, this is connected here, uh, if this is zero, we're putting out this value. If this is one, we're putting out this value. And everything in between is again, linear scaled. So if it's a one, you see output 32,000. If it's a zero, it's zero. Everything in between is linear. So 50 should be exactly the half of this. Of course, with some rounding mistake here. So that's the manual control. It's pretty simple, actually. Pretty simple, pretty easy. <clears throat> and this, is the, this goes to a variable that I call pump output. And this pump output is connected somehow to our PLC output. It is this, uh, I think this red line. The red one, yeah, it's this red line. It's just directly connected there. Very simple. And you see, there is no delay. The delay is approximately one millisecond, depending on PLC speed. Oh, yeah, that's the manual control. Pretty simple. That that's actually the easiest part. <laughs> oh, logistic systems. I don't know yet. There's a lot of programming involved, like a lot of uh, SCL. Lectures on SCL. Hey, there's going to be an SCL part here. Stay tuned. There's some parts of this program I programmed in SCL. We will see. So that was the manual one. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Next one is the on-off controls. If you go in the main and I go to on-off controller, this one is even easier. There I've got, or not easier, but still easy. I've got this here, five liters. I want to go to five liters. That's what I set this to. Um, and you see this one needs as input the fill level, that is the current level, and it needs the set point, which is where do we want to go, right? 
Um, if I go in here, boop, 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 I need the password, which I put in the comments, Hegamol123, uh, I go in there and you see, wow, that is so difficult. <laughs> As I said, this one is even easier. Um, it's pretty simple. If uh, the current fill level is less than our set point, we are pushing the maximum value again to our output. That's it. If we are less than our level that we want to go to, we're putting out the maximum number. Right? So that's why the red one is always at zero or at maximum. There's nothing in between. It's just on off. Um, now you might be wondering why, why are we not just at the line because it's just on off because the pump has this slow behavior. A real pump has the slow behavior. It's not just on off. It has a flow. So it's not like if you turn on your sink, it's not on all of a sudden. It takes a couple of milliseconds, maybe even seconds sometimes to turn on fully. You don't turn it off fully at once. You turn it off and it's slowly, it's slowly, slow, uh, it's slowly off. Like if I fill my glass here, I'm not filling at 100%. First, it's slow the filling and then it's faster and then it ramps down, it ramps up. That's exactly what happens to the pump. Uh, if I put this idle time, this idle time has to do with this. If I put it to one millisecond, this behavior is deactivated. So right now it is really just on and off. There's no time anymore, which is not realistic. Everything is slow. Everything has a delay. It's not real to have something that reacts immediately. It just doesn't exist. This idle time, we get to it when I'm looking at the tank behavior. The tank behavior uh, is where I put in the most coding effort, I would say. That's also the secret here. The rest is pretty simple. Uh, let's, that, that's just on off, on off with, hyster with hysteresis. Let's look at this one. Pretty simple. Um, it even has one input more, one input more on off with hysteresis and that input is the so-called tolerance if i keep the tolerance at zero it is an on off controller it's doing exactly the same thing that it did before but usually you put in some tolerance let's make this uh whoops 0 0.5 liters which means at 4.5 we turn on at 5.5 we turn off okay. so we have a slight tolerance that's pretty simple. And that's the input. This is the other input that goes in here. Uh, the advantage of this is it doesn't turn on and off too fast anymore. Here, sometimes it triggers on, off, on, off, on, off, bad. Here it's on, off, on, off. A better system behavior doesn't hurt the, electric, uh, the mechanical components too much. If I go in here with the provided password, uh, you will see this one is also pretty simple. You can program an hysteresis and an off controller very, very easy. This is also co called a three point controller. Three point controller. The point where you want to go to is the five liters, the point where you turn on 4.5, and the point you turn off 5.5. Three points. Um, yeah, it's very simple actually. We will have an upper limit and a lower limit, of course. The upper limit is calculated by the set point plus added. The tolerance. So we have 5.5. Sure. Uh, sub uh, the, the lower limit is the set point minus the tolerance. 4.5. Very simple, very easy. It's the most basic math you can imagine. Um, and then we have... yeah, <clears throat> Then we have this here. A set reset. We set the pump active. So the pump should be on when we are below. So when our current fill level is below the lower limit. Then we turn on. Uh, we turn off the reset when our current fill level is above our upper limit. Then we turn off. Very simple. So it's really not magic. Uh, the other two networks here are if the pump is active, we're putting this 32,700 to our pump output, meaning we are activating the analog output at full strength. If the pump is not active, if this pump is not active, we're putting a zero to the uh, analog output, which is... Hey, analog output off, pump fully off, pump fully on, pump fully off. Uh, yeah, the video will be available, sure. So it's pretty simple.
a little bit more complicated than the uh, than, than the on-off controller, but also not magic. You could have put all of this in one network. Like I could have taken this ad block basically in before here, right? But no, I'm not. It's cleaner programming. The more you split your program apart, the better. Usually, that's the standard. Hey, Bob. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this one also done. So this is the easy stuff, easy stuff. We've talked about this, 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 this. Easy. Um, this one is a little bit more complicated. Analog output processing. Um, because I am not, I'm simulating an analog output. Let's go into the manual processing here. Um, Uh, because I do not have a real pump connected to this, there's no real physical pump connected to this, I need to simulate it. And this, the, the pump is simulated in here, or the output is simulated in here. Um, and you see the PLC output here is an input and the flow is actually an in-out. It's always in-outputs are always shown at the left side. Uh, but this is actually this thing that gets calculated in here. So let's have a look into the analog processing. A lot of stuff happens. <laughs> a lot of stuff happens. Um, it's the following. Basically, two things happen. Here on top, how does your PLC work? You have your analog value, and your analog value that you're working with is between 0 and 32,000 in this case. Right? <laughs> is Joseph. Hi. Um, currently, the value is... 2,294. This is this PLC output that I've been talking about, uh, the pump output that I've been talking about earlier uh, that we get out of all of our functions. So for the manual one, I can just directly control this. The higher I put the, gra the bar, the higher this value, the lower, the lower this value. Uh, I'm norming this again and then I'm scaling it again. I'm scaling it to a value from 0 to 10. 0 to 10 because usually... Uh, your PLC uses for, or oh, that's one method, uh, it uses 0 to 10 volts as an analog output signal. So if our, if our pump here, if our uh, PLC value internally is at 0, the output voltage is also 0. If I put it to 100%, the output voltage is 10 volts. And everything in between, if I put it to 50%, the output voltage, whoops, the output voltage is, whoops, what is this? Uh, is 5 volts, approximately. And everything in between is linear, right? The lower, the lower, the higher, the higher. That's what's happening internally, and that's what also the PLC output module does. Uh, yes, the, of course, it can be used to control a valve for flow rates, yeah, of course. Um, exactly. This is what... It's inside the PLC. Uh, so this is what's inside the PLC and this is what's coming out of the PLC usually. Because I do not have a real valve connected to it, the second thing is the valve calculation, so to say. Um, what we have is the following. If I have zero volts, if my PLC output is at zero volts, I want to have a flow. You see here at the output side, it is a flow that comes out. A flow uh, depends. It highly depends, Joseph. On the input side, it is usually 4 to 20 milliamps. On the output side, highly depends, hey Thora, highly depends on your um, output module, on your component that you connect to it. If it should be, uh, so Joseph, if, if I would like to have it from 4 to 20 milliamps, I could just say here, I start from 4 to 20. That's why I wrote it this way. You're right, could be both, but I use the voltage. Common values that are used, I even have that in here. <laughs> Look at this, minus 10 to 10 volts, 0 to 10 volts, 1 through 5 volts, 4 to 20 milliamps, 0 to 20 milliamps, or minus 20 to 20 milliamps. All of this, those are standard values. Depending on your output module, depending on your output device, well, you just have to pick the right one. Highly depends. But I use the 0 to 10. And those 0 to 10... If this output voltage that I simulate with this block is zero volts, uh, the flow, the output flow out of the block will also be zero liters per second. And that's what I'm calculating with this. 
if we have a voltage of 10 volts, we will have two liters per second. And this is what the second one uh, calculates here. It just transforms. This is usually what your output device does. It could be a motor, it could be a pump, it could be a heater. It transforms the voltage that we have here on the input side into a physical value that we have on the right side. Of course, this you don't do that in the PLC usually. You always do that with a physical device. And you have to read in the data sheet what it exactly does, which values it needs. Um, yeah. Uh, why can I not go online? Did I change something? Yeah. So right now, the value here is at 58%, which is a flow of 1.16 liters. Depending, yeah, I can change it between zero and two liters per second. That's what pumps do. They have an output liters per second. And this is, this is what my analog output processing function does. Normally, you don't need any of this. This first network, this is what the PLC output module does for you. The second network, that is what the physical device, your control device does. Uh, which, of course, in a simulation, you have to simulate both. That's this thing. You don't need it usually. I only have this function because I'm simulating it. It is exactly the same for the input processing. Whoops. Exactly the same for the input module. Um, yeah, it's exactly the same, just the other way around. Um, maybe the only difference is that the input module the fill level as an integer goes from 0 to 27,000, not to 36,000, but to 27,000, because that is what the input module, that is how the input module was designed. 100% on the input side is not 36,000, it is 27,648. That's just how it was designed. Doesn't matter too much, but that's what's in the input side. Does matter. I uh, got this, got that. All of that was a little bit complicated. You can watch it in the replay, perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, these two blocks I only have really because I'm simulating all of this. What else do we have? Um, the PID block. Hey, let's look at the PID block. Uh, this PID block, is if I select uh, my method number four here, right? Controller type four. Uh, we need the set point as an input and we have the fill level as an input as well. Right? I could have taken the fill level like the real input as the input value from the sensor, which would be the one that goes up to 27,000. But I chose the fill level here in liters, which I somewhere scaled from 0 to 10 liters. It's pretty much the same. Just need to choose the right input. Um, but that you can see on my PID video, actually. Way too lazy to explain that in detail right now. Um, yeah, whatever the PID block does, it does that. This is not something I can control. It's internal. Uh, we could change the parameters and stuff, but I've made, I think, two or three videos just about parameterizing it here. You can, maybe what's interesting here, the only thing is exactly this here. The maximum input for the, um, for the PLC, for the PID compact block, is 27,648. Not 36,000, but 27,000. That's how it was designed. I have always hated it, but that's how it was designed. If I read, hi. <clears throat> yeah. I think that only leads, leaves one block for the simulation. I mean, there's also data blocks and stuff, and but not going to go in there. Um, that just leaves one block that we need to talk about, and that is the most complex one by far. <laughs> that one is the most complex one by far. Everything else was so far still okay. I mean, you can click through it, but not really too much of programming effort. Um, the last one that's missing is the tank behavior, and that's the transfer function. In the previous video, I heard, I read some comments that something, said something, hey, how does the transfer function of the tank look like? Because it behaves like, it kind of behaves like a real tank. Right? So we have some outflow, right? we have some outflow, so some water gets out of the tank. Uh, we could have some random disturbance. 
so something strange happens with it you have an idle time so the pump not immediately reacts but after some time only and all of this usually takes place inside the tank inside the pump inside the control hardware inside the system that we want to control if we're looking at uh systems what's it called uh, closed loop if we're looking at systems yeah it is uh always the soul system so it's always the system that is the complicated thing do we have a better picture there it's always this control system that is the problem that that's the one we want to control and this is the simulation for it like everything for that has to do with the system behavior is inside this tank behavior and it is quite complicated uh pd for positioning control i don't plan on it maybe i'll make some in the future but i haven't planned about it yet <clears throat> yeah so let's see into this tank we have a lot of inputs we have the current pump flow that I have shown in the other blocks. This is the output from the other blocks, right? Um, how strong should the pump be on? How much does the pump go? For example, in manual mode, I'm just controlling it with this slider. Zero to two, that's what I'm doing. And in all the other modes, right? it is also controlled by the... Um, oh no, this is just the manual one? Oh, strange. In the other modes, it's controlled by the... Um, maybe I did some dirty programming there. Uh, by the output of the blocks. Then we have the random error. You can see it's right now 1. If I select another one here, it is 2, 3, 4, and... Uh, yeah, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So internally, that gets calculated. Then we have the idle time, right? Uh, this idle time, of course, goes in there. It needs the tank behavior, needs it, and we have the outflow, which is also needed for the tank behavior. All of this leads into the tank behavior. So everything you can see down here, that's the tank behavior. Just parameters for it. Of course, internally, it's a bit more complicated. It is not too much, but definitely already some, some thought in it. Uh, and you see there's some SCL in here. There is even more SCL, I think, up here somewhere. Yeah, there's more SCL. Um, because some of the things, they have been quite complicated. And we need some loops and we need stuff. So some of it is SCL. But we can go through it very quick. I'm not going to explain it in detail. Because that would be way too, too much, some, some of it. Um, but I'm at least going to explain it. So an, a programmer that already knows about the types knows what is going on <laughs> and everyone that doesn't know but you can watch the video like two times and then you also know what's going on <clears throat> first network pretty simple pretty easy let's start with the simple stuff uh we have set point limitations so if i want to set the set point here in on off for example to <laughs> uh, if i want to set the set point here for example to 50 the tank only goes to 10 if i want to set it to 50 the set point automatically goes just to 10, right? And this is the set point limitation. If this current set point is greater or equal than 10, then it is only 10. That's what I'm doing here. If it is less or equal than zero, then it is only zero. So if I want to type minus five, not possible. It always just, the, the lower limit is zero. This is also called in programming clamping. I actually don't know if there's a function for PLCs, probably not, but this is a so-called clamp. No. We're clamping this value between two values. Right? An input cannot go higher than 10, not go lower than 0. Clamp. It's clamped between. Pretty simple. That's still the simple stuff. Um, I did the same with the idle time. So the idle time can only go from 1 to 10,000, which is 10 seconds. So if I go here, idle time, maybe bubble, whatever. Oh, I only have this there. Uh, if I go to minus five, for example, it automatically jumps to one. I limited this field so you can only put in four values. So it cannot be higher than 10,000 anyway. Let's leave that at 2,000. Oh, whoops. 
Now I broke it. Great, perfect. There we go. Yeah. So clamping, very important. This is a very important technique that you will need plenty of times. Um, I'm wondering why there's no value, why there is no block about it. There's probably some block somewhere. Is it mathematical? Limit. It's probably this limit function. I've never used it. Yeah. So it's basically the same that this limit uh, thing here does. Uh, it has a minimum. I would take the z one at the minimum. It has an in input. I would take the idle time. And it has a maximum. I would take the 10,000. And the output would be the scaled one here. So block is called limit. Very standard block. It's used plenty of times everywhere. Most programmers would call it not limit, but clamping. But okay, sure. Automation engineers, do whatever you want. Um, this one here looks a little bit more complicated. <laughs> um, I think this is also the most complicated part. No, not the most, but one of the more complicated parts. I'm not going to go into detail with this, but this is the main behavior of the pump. Um, of the idle time, right? Uh, the pump is a little bit slow. So in on off, if I go to five liters, for example, you see the pump ramps up a little bit. It has a little ramp up time and it has also this overshoot and ramp down time. This needs to be calculated this time, depending on the idle time. If the idle time is lower, of course, also the oscillations will be way less. Maybe 100 is a little bit too few. 500, yeah. yeah. That looks freaky. Make 1000, it even gets more and more, right? So um, this is what we call in controls uh, a first degree system. Uh, that's what it's in, in German. That's the direct translation. I, I hope it's called first degree system in English as well. Um, and system ersten Grades. And this somehow happens in here. Yeah, that's why I, did, I, I don't want to explain it. Um, basically what happens in here, just very, very roughly, we are um, summarizing the last values of the pump. We're not looking at the pump at one point, we're looking at the pump in the last 100 points. So the last 100 milliseconds at least. And we are calculating from that on. So it's not like an immediate jump, but it can be a ramp. You can only make a ramp if you know what happened in the past. You're always adding a small part of the ramp, right, of the maximum value. And that's happening in this function here. That's why we need the idle time and we also need the last results of the pump. It's in there. That's why pump output memory, there we go. Not too necessary, but still a little nice trick. Um, the problem is this is very, very heavy on the PLC load. And that's the main problem of this simulation. Um, it is extremely heavy on the PLC load. If I, would my, uh, if I would like to make it even more accurate, I probably can't make it much more accurate because the PLC load will be too high and the PLC will go in constant error. Because for the calculation, what happened with the pump in the past the past like 100 milliseconds in this case, um, or in the past, what do we have? 1000 milliseconds, right? It needs to calculate all of this over and over and over again. Every time it goes through, it needs to calculate and push new values in it. So it's quite heavy on the PLC. Not too necessary. So I'll minimize this. Um, yeah. What else do we have in here, actually? I'll see. Uh, what is this tank inlet? Oh yeah, <laughs> the scan time. Uh, let me see. Actually, I don't know. Uh, scan time. Here we go. Uh, testing. Wait. Shouldn't it be here? How do I get to the scan time again? I know exactly what you mean. Is it only in the main? No. Isn't it in testing? I always thought it is in testing. 
can also do it here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's the cycle time. Oh, I can actually make it better. The cycle time right now is like one second, uh, one millisecond. Sometimes, sometimes it goes to 2.5. So I can actually make it more accurate. I think I had troubles with this earlier, so I changed it already. I could make the... Um, because right now it takes like 1000 values or so. I can't remember where I put it. Um, oh, it's an array. It's up here, I think. Yeah. Oh, it actually takes... <laughs> you see this up here? I made an array that remembers the last 10,000 values? Yeah, that can remember up to the last 10,000 values. Um, which are then used in here, but I would have to see again. From one to idle time. So the bigger the idle time, the more values it will calculate with. So if I change the idle time to like 10,000, this should also jump up. Yeah. So if I go now, like now, right now I have 10,000, uh, 10,000 scans, 10,000 values I'm calculating with. And you see the um, the current load on the PLC is so high that the cycle time of the PLC, so one execution of the main function, takes right now three milliseconds. And this is already a strong PLC we're using. It's a 1500. So it's this is quite heavy. Eight milliseconds. The maximum was 14 milliseconds. That is extremely high already. The PLC at 50 milliseconds, the PLC will go, go into error state. I've already done it so that, well, it doesn't do that. I had it more accurate before, but yeah, good. Not, it does not need it too much. Um, this is actually wrong here, but okay. Uh, in this network, we are just calculating the, um, yeah. This is actually wrong. I didn't know. Um, but okay, it's, it doesn't hurt too much to have it here. And um, what we're doing here is we are calculating the pump power from this re from this memory. So the memory, all of the last thousand values, let's say it's the last thousand values because it's one second. Um, all of these are just summarized. They're added up. Right? Here, they are added up to a huge number. They're going to end in a huge number and then they're again divided by 1000. So we have it exactly for one millisecond. Oh no, it's divided by 1000 because we are doing this exactly 1000 times per second. That's why I'm dividing here. And then we have it per millisecond and then I'm just adding the fill level that we have right now in the tank plus that pump power. And this happens exactly one time per millisecond. That's why I need this interrupt every millisecond. Every millisecond we're adding the current pump power to our current level. Exactly once per millisecond because all the calculations they're based on one millisecond. <laughs> That's strange. Um, then the next is we are calculating some disturbances. The disturbance gets calculated and it's just depending on what I select here, down here, random disturbance or weak or medium or strong. medium. Uh, it just selects one of these move blocks and you see it's just connected to one value. It's 0, it's 0 0.0025, 0 0.0035 or 0 0.004. And that is the strength of the um, disturbance, which is of course for the transfer function important. Let's make that weak. If it's zero, it pushes in a zero. Um, and that value gets multiplied. You see this here, um, this here. Well, I thought it gets multiplied. Evert. Let me check. Disturbance strength. Oh yeah, it does get multiplied. Um, uh, it gets, like the current tank level gets subtracted by the strength of the disturbance. So you have the fill level, the fill level gets subtracted by the disturbance strength, right? 
So if that's strong, it's get it gets stop strike by 0 0.004. And if it's weak, 0 0.0025. But only it gets only distract uh, subtracted. If we have the random value, there's a random value is above five. This random value, right? This random value needs to be calculated somehow. Random values are not a thing in controls engineering. You're never talking about random values. Random values are a disturbance. You never program them. <laughs> no way. There's, there's no one that would ever program a random value in PLCs. That is why I had to come up with something. And these two networks here, right? These two networks, they lead to a number between zero, between uh, zero and nine, right? Zero and nine. Um, and it is happening the following way. If you ever need a random value for your PLCs for simulation or whatever, uh, I'm taking here the system time at the current system time. That is kind of random. Right? The current system time is kind of random, actually. Uh, you can see it jumps around a little bit random. Um, and that current system time, I am just... Uh, dividing by 10 and taking the rest out of it. So the mo the modulo. I'm taking the modulo and that is a random value between zero and nine. Uh, it would actually make more sense to make that a random value between zero and 100. Let me see, that should run way better now. And that smaller. Cause the random value was way too aggressive now. And now I've made it like only 5% as aggressive, uh, only 10% as aggressive. Yeah, it used to be way too aggressive. Doesn't matter. I just made a change, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, that's what's happening in those two networks. Very complicated, I know, does matter. And these three networks, that's what's happening. And then also here, disturbance outflow, let me see. Oh my God, what did I do here? Oh yeah. Sorry. Oh, that, that's what's happening here. We have this outflow. It's not disturbance. It's, it's also disturbance plus outflow. Uh, we have this outflow out of the tank that I can say here, for example, 10. That is 10% per second. So if we have 10 liters, we will lose one liter per second. If we have five liters, we will, leave, uh, we will lose 0 0.5 liters per second. So always 10%. Um, that's what I said now. This is this here. And just through some very simple basic math, right? Some very simple basic, basic math. I calculated it so that basically we're taking the fill level and we're always subtracting that 10% right now. That's what's happening in here. And we're also multiplying it by 1000 because all of this, this, this whole thing here, the whole function gets executed 1000 times per second. So we only want the disturbance to happen. Like we want to lose 10% per second. That's why multiplying it, uh, dividing it actually in the end by 1000. That's what's happening in here. Not, not too important. You can click through it. That's what, but that's in general what happens here. How exactly it is, I can't remember, but that's what's happening in here. And the last is, um, because of all the calculations, it could be that our fill level would be lower than zero. And we're clamping here again. We're limiting again between zero and 10. Our fill level cannot, it can never be higher than 10. It can never, it can never be lower than 10. That's what's happening in here. Not too complicated then. Uh, yeah. But all of this is actually quite some effort. It is a little bit complicated, especially this part and the disturbance part. Uh, but you have the password now to get into the block. You have some explanation by me what I thought I was doing back then. Um, let me change that back actually. So that we have the current state. Yeah. So some complicated things happening. In the end, it's not too much. And that's pretty much the program. All of this is somehow linked to our HMI here. Uh, well, we could look at it for a second. Let's look at the HMI for a second. In this case, I did not take um, 
a Siemens HMI, I took a so-called Symmetic PC station, a WinCC runtime, which is a PC. So this is running on PC. This will never run on an HMI. You would have to reprogram it. So HMI runtime, and here we go. I can just go on the screen. You can just see the screen. It's very simple, very basic, actually. Um, yeah. So we've got the tank here, for example, and the tank is just a slider, right? A slider, and this slider uses the fill level. Oh, that's so complicated, isn't it? Well, it's really just linked. I can't show much here. It's really just linked to everything. Maybe um, two things are interesting. For example, this gauge and some of these things. Only if the controller right now is manual, you can see this thing. Only if it is PID, you can see all of these values. Only if it's this one, you can see these. So all of these are hidden uh, depending on the controller type that's selected. And that we can do by selecting whatever we want to hide. And then we have animations. Then we have a display, a visibility. You can see I just took, if my controller type is one, or one is from one to one, which is exactly one, then you can see this. For the other one here, if the controller type is four to four, then you can see this. So it's exactly four. Or this one is the set point, you can see if the controller type is two, three or four, from two to four, then you can see it. So pretty simple as well. Uh, you just need to see it once. Yeah. This one here, the trend view I showed in another video. I don't want to go too much into detail. I just put in the values that I want as a trend, the fill level and the PLC output, done. Some formatting happening as well, but pretty much that's it. Uh, yeah. So very simple, very basic stuff actually going on on the HMI side. Uh, no, there was one other thing that I wanted to show. No, I forgot. was it forgot can't be i forgot what i wanted to show i think the other time thing was more important than the beginning let me play around a little bit with it so i remember what it was yeah i remember now <laughs> all of these values here they are linked to my uh pid controller so they are not in my program. I haven't shown these anywhere in my program because they are in the standard program that is there. Um, so in the controller, I have program blocks and there we have, I had my oops, PID block, this one here, right? And this one is linked to all of these values. Um, they are somewhere in there. To get there, you have to find the technology object in your technology objects. There's the PID controller. You can right click and you have open in DB editor and there you can find them in retain control parameters. And then you have your gain. That's the proportional gain. You can see uh, if I have this open now you can see it. If I change the proportional gain, you see it changes with inside the function. So all of these things that can be found inside the data block of the function. Pretty simple, pretty easy. You can just drag and drop them on the HMI. Done. <laughs> I think the only thing that you might have to change is accessibility uh, from HMI. You have to put also writable. This is, I think you have to activate. I made a video on this, I think. But it was not, well, it was kind of complicated to find the values, but those are the three important ones. Gain, uh, TI, TD. And those are those. Not too, not too difficult. Something strange is going on here, but that's ah oh, no, this looks this looks nice actually for control technology. This looks nice. Now I would need to tune my controller, which I'm not going to do because I did it in another video. Can I have on another on a private topic? I probably can't. Um, maybe someone else can help you, Joseph. I've done enough programming for the day. I would say, uh, how long? How long was this? Oh yeah, exactly one hour. Look at this. Exactly one hour, I would say. that That's pretty nice. And that's just an overview of the program. So nothing really extremely complicated going on. Most complicated stuff is the tank behavior here with some SCL, some random stuff, some calculations, but also not too complicated. 
you all have the password now that I'm also going to post in the chat again. Um, and then what is it, Joseph? Can I help you in like one or two minutes? Describe your describe your problem. <laughs> describe your problem and I might be able to fix it now. If I am not able to fix it now, then I'll call it a day. But maybe I am. Look at this. The error calculation is now way nicer, actually. Look at this. This is nice. That looks like a real system. Could behave. Nice. Love it. So quickly explain, Joseph. You've got... Two minutes of my time. <laughs> uh, as I already said, the, the stream will be online. So if you want to check it out again, uh, it will be online on my channel. I'll put it in my Tia Portal playlist. Uh, yeah. I love music. Like I'm listening to actually not too good music. Gotta admit, but good enough. Uh, yeah. Maybe, sorry for all the gaming streams that I did lately, but I am exhausted from work, exhausted from programming, exhausted from everything. So I also need to relax. This is a hobby channel. Never forget, this is a hobby channel. It's not a programming channel. I never ever said it's a programming channel. This is just a hobby channel. <laughs> so whatever I feel like, that's going to happen. <laughs> well, also, thank you for joining in there, some of you. Always appreciate it. Did I forget anything? No, 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 no. Using PLC tags to set an alarm on the HMI. I think I made a video about it. I can't remember exactly, but I think I made a video about it. Uh, I can't remember how it exactly works. I'm not an expert on alarms, I have to say. I always want to, to get deeper in it. But yeah, there's HMI alarms. You just go in HMI alarms, you have discrete alarms, you say blah, whatever that is. Uh, trigger tag, you select the tag. Uh, this one here, for example, and you say that's it. <laughs> that's pretty much how you trigger alarms i've had a video about alarming basic alarming not gonna go into advanced alarming yeah i'm gonna delete that again ah, it doesn't matter if i delete it I, I won't change this anyway i won't save it anyway uh <laughs> yeah it makes the, the rockwell software i haven't worked with it so i can't say anything i know the siemens software is quite convenient it has its it has its weaknesses, but every software has it. It is overall okay. I'll give it a B. I'll give it a B minus. I don't know the other control softwares, but a B minus is already pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. Good. So yeah, I've made it. If my Joseph, just check out the video on alarms. I think I made simple alarms or something. I made. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Alarms. Yeah, I made a video. 18 minutes just on alarms, easy alarms. There you go. <laughs> what is this with the with the advertisements now? This is annoying. Ah, uh, the screen alarms. There, there you go. HMI easy alarms. There's way more to alarms, but I'm not an expert on it. So I, I will make videos in the future about it, but that nah, nah. Not now. Good. Time is precious, as uh, Chuchu says. Um good. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. I will have to get some groceries today. So uh that's what I still have to do. Maybe I'll grab some dinner now and then I'll Maybe go too bad. I don't know yet. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye. Bye.